In this video, you'll see how to use Google Spreadsheets, Google Sheets, to create a histogram that's effectively a bar chart for continuous data. Uh, so we have in our spreadsheet a column of data here. These are uh, test scores, percentage of test scores for a group of students in a, one particular year group. Uh, as you can see, we've got a long, long list of data here. It goes down to about 100, 136 pieces of data. Um, it's really important for this that the data is stored in a single column. This won't work if it's across multiple columns. So the first thing we're going to do is to select the data, and we can select it quite quickly just by clicking on the A at the top of the column, so it saves us having to drag down. And then having selected it, we're going to insert a chart. We can do that two ways. We can either go through the Insert Chart menu, or we can do that in a single click, and select the column again, uh, just by clicking on this button here, this Insert Chart button. So we'll click on that and Google will automatically produce a chart of the data. Now this is a really nice feature in Google Sheets that isn't so readily available in other spreadsheet packages, uh, certainly not older versions. Um, there's uh, an add-in for Excel for versions 2010 and 2013, um, but it's considerably more complicated to use than the, the single click that Google offers. So it's a really neat feature. Uh, so here's our histogram. Um, one thing I don't like is it actually leaves slight gaps between the bars, which is something we wouldn't ideally want. Uh, and we need to play around with it. Although it's done quite well at producing the histogram, the divisions on the x-axis aren't very good. So we can play around with that quite easily uh, by using customization. So we'll click here on the customization tab. And we have a whole list of options here. So we can we have our uh, type, which just says histogram at the moment. Obviously, uh, we didn't put a title heading on our data, so the Google Sheet doesn't know what our data is. So we can call this test scores, um, since that's what the data is. Uh, we have a legend over here that just says count. Well, we don't really need that, so let's just remove that. Um, it gives our graph a little bit of a cleaner look. Um, we've now got test scores as our heading. Um, we've still got these awkward divisions, seem to every 8.5, which isn't terribly helpful. If we scroll down, uh, Google calls these buckets. So rather than have them size 8.5, let's change them so that the size is 10. Uh, if we just click out of that, you'll see now we've got much nicer divisions. Uh, we could change that, of course, to be something else. We could change it to be 20. Uh, the the graph's not as sensitive there. We change it to be 5. Um, it's much more sensitive, but perhaps um, it doesn't show us quite the same patterns that we had when it was 10. So let's put it back to 10. Um, Omit item dividers. This uh, is automatically selected here, and it's probably best to select it. If you remove it, you end up with the idea that these are actually building blocks here for each of the bars, which doesn't look particularly good. Uh, it'd be nice if maybe at some later date they'll put graphics in there. That might be a useful feature, but not for now. Uh, we don't have any axis labels at the moment. Indeed, our vertical axis has got rather odd divisions on it. Now, really get again this is just a question of playing around with it to get what you want so we'll change axis to left vertical um, and at the moment we've got it going from 0 to 30 0 is our min and 30 is our max well let's just change it to um, let's just change that to 28 and see what happens um, oh that's okay but it hasn't actually gone up to 30 we'll switch it back to 460 30 um, oh there we go it's now put in divisions of 5 uh, it's a little bit neater, it's a, a nicer scale for that, so we can play around with that. There's a lot more to do with the graph, but what's left now is really cosmetic. It's the axis labels, and perhaps changing the colours and the, the fonts and, and stylizing it. Um, but that's got actually the, the basics of a histogram that is good enough to be able to use. So we'll click on Insert, and there is our histogram within our sheet. Thank you for watching.